What's up, guys? So, uh, I never thought I'd be saying this. Uh, we're here in Miami. The gate was 14.14 million. It, is, it was a sellout, 19,165 people. The highest grossing event ever at the arena. We broke our own record, and it is the fourth highest grossing UFC event of all time. Miami is on fire. This place is unbelievable. Uh, what they've done in the state and in the city in the last uh, 10 years is phenomenal. But anyway, fight of the night, uh, Dustin and Benoit. Performance of the night, O'Malley. And uh, we gave everybody who had a finish $50,000 uh, except for Dustin because he won fight of the night. That's all we still got. Talk to me. All right. Dana Nova, I got you for a short time, so I just want to ask you first about Sean O'Malley and his performance. Uh, you know, he wanted to finish his first title defense, but he, he didn't get that, but he looked absolutely fantastic. So what did you think overall of his performance? He put on a clinic, and I don't know if anybody can finish Cheeto Vera. I mean, that guy's got a chin like nothing I've ever seen. Ate those two knees, um, big shots all night. I mean, everybody knows the power that O'Malley has. Uh, he ate all those shots, uh, even shots to the body that he took, kicks and, and punches to the body. Cheeto Vera is one of the most durable fighters I've ever seen. Yeah. You talked about the incredible gate tonight. I think they said on the broadcast it was one of the highest gates that didn't involve Conor McGregor. So I guess where does, where does Sean stand in terms of star power for the company? And, and Biggest bantamweight fight of all time. If you ba Based off energy, excitement, uh, gate, and pay-per-view, it's, it's by far the biggest fight ever in the Bantamweight division. Where do you see his ceiling? I mean, our comparisons to Conor McGregor, I know that's a little bit tough. He's one of a kind. But, I mean, is he one of the biggest stars we've ever seen? In the he's country? on his way. Yeah, he's on his way. He's, he's the biggest star ever in Bantamweight history. We can say that right now. <laughs> Definitely. What do you make of uh, this, these call-outs of Ilya Taporia? I mean, is that something that you're even considering right now, or is it too soon to be talking about moving divisions? Well, it's not Tuesday yet. <laughs> <laughs> on Tuesday, maybe we can talk about moving divisions. Yeah, right. I, I don't know about moving divisions. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know how I feel about that. I mean, even Toporia was talking about not fighting anybody in the division after just winning the title. Yeah. That, that's crazy talk. I want to ask you about Dustin Poirier as well. Uh, obviously, future Hall of Famer, legend, fight of the night. I mean, uh, what did you think of his performance and, and him at this point in his career? These are the kind of fights, you know, when you talk about um, – let me think of how to say this. The, fights that, the, the fight that he took tonight with Benoit, I mean, everybody, when the, when the talk first started, everybody was like, ooh, this is a bad fight for Poirier, blah, 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 blah. And then Poirier came out and said, you know what, I didn't die, and all this other. This is shit that makes you a fucking legend. These are legendary fights. When you, when you go in and you face a guy who is a savage and, 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 and uh, you know, looks like you can't win this fight or people think you can't win this fight, and then you go in and do it, in spectacular fashion, the way that he did tonight. A lot of these fighters um, get very, uh, you know, you've heard it many times in the past. They want me to lose, or they're trying to make me lose. Um, I heard some nutty shit the other day from somebody that I won't even mention, but uh, we don't determine whether you lose or whether you win. You do. What we try to do is put on the best match made fight that we can possibly do. And that's why... Big stars are built in the UFC, and legendary fights happen every weekend. Nice. Last thing for me, given his legendary status and his performance, when it is Tuesday, is he in the conversation for a title shot in his next Poirier? Performance? Yeah. I mean, Poirier, again, like I just said, I just went through that whole, you know, his stock again goes through the roof. At his age, all the things he's accomplished, all the things he's done, look at what he did tonight. And I don't know if you guys – are too busy typing or whatever the fuck it is you guys do during fights. But if you stood up during that fight and saw the arena, it was insane. It was insane. And pe people were going nuts. Yeah, Poirier went to a whole nother level tonight with this fight. Dana, what did you make of Michael Venom Page's UFC debut? I mean, he shut down Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland looked incredibly frustrated. What did you make of him? And his yeah, listen, he's got that style that's very, um, you know, he, he's, he's a counter striker and, and, you know, flashy, and we got to match make his next fight the right way. Did you feel like Kevin sort of, I don't want to say gave up, but in the third round was clearly just like, I don't know what to do with this guy? I don't know if he gave up. Um, you know, I, I, I had uh, 
Michael winning the first round. I had Kevin winning the second round. And then you got to go in and whoever wins the third round. That's probably, probably the first time that Kevin's ever fought anybody cockier than him. <laughs> uh, earlier this week, Mike Tyson has been re announced a return to boxing. I know in the past you said you didn't want him to fight again. You tried to talk him out of fighting again. Have you spoken to him about this one? He gets mad when I do this, but Mike's 60, man. I, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Who gives a shit what I think? It's not my fight. Um, I, I love Mike Tyson, you know, personally as a friend, and he's one of my favorite athletes of all time. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's see what he can go in there and put together a training camp and come in, and, you know, I, I don't like to see guys fighting it. Uh, be a 31-year age difference during that fight. Just, you know. You, know, you guys know what I think of that stuff. That said, it is on Netflix, which is a new development, right? Them getting into live sports. Obviously, you have a TV deal coming up soon. I think the Netflix should have gotten into live sports years ago. I think, I think they're, they're, uh, they're, they're late to the game, but they are a force. They're a force, man. And, and, and when you look at um, the amount of homes that they're in worldwide, um, I, you guys heard me talk about this show, Reacher. I posted about it. I love that show. I hate fucking TV. I don't watch any TV shows, hardly ever. Don't watch movies anymore. But I love the show Reacher, right? I can watch Reacher whenever I want to. I can watch it when I get home. I can watch it next week. I can, right? Live sports, like this event tonight, you had to watch tonight. As all these massive streaming companies start to get bigger and bigger, they have to, they have to be involved in live sports. Safe to say you'll be talking to them when your TV deal comes up? I'm sure we'll be talking to everybody. Uh, last one for me, Conor McGregor says he still wants to fight in June, and uh, he also mentioned he wanted to fight Nate Diaz in the sphere on Mexican Independence Day. Did either of those two interest you? <laughs> I'm looking for Mexicans at the sphere uh, on Mexican Independence Day. Nate. Huh? Nate Diaz. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm not doing that fight. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh, what did, I know you gave them bonuses, but what did you make of the performances of Curtis Blades and uh, Jack mm. Della? Like two guys that seem to be down on the scorecards and picked up in more comeback wins. Yeah, I agree. Look, look great. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you nailed it. I don't know what else to say other than what you just said. You, sure. yeah. Thank you. Uh, we had two uh, interesting entrances with uh, Michael Venom Page came out with like the, the cape and the Undertaker thing. He said that even the UFC kind of helped him out a bit, and then Michelle Pereira got approval to do his dance routine when he walked out. So are we going to see more of this in the UFC? I know it's not something you've normally done in the past. No. So not a fan? No. Uh, Joanne Wood uh, retired at, uh, after the first fight. What do you make of her, her career in the UFC? I know she never got her title shot, but she seems to be one of these beloved figures. Awesome human. Yeah, she's an awesome human, incredible fighter, and uh, I couldn't be more happy for her. I know that, um, you know, I, I don't know how many years ago it was, but pretty recent within the last five or something you know she went through some hard times and some ups and downs that, that people go through and she seems like she's in a really good place she seems like she's really happy in her personal life and obviously happy enough professionally to finally call it quits so um it could not happen to a better human being absolutely love her and wish her nothing but the best last one for me uh in saudi arabia they've been holding a lot of these big boxing events you know with the pyrotechnics and all the the glitz and glamour not something you also do really with the ufc so are we going to see a lot of that when you do eventually hold your, your fight card there so i i think the difference is that um and i don't know this for a fact but i'm just assuming the the the, the boxing events that they're holding there they're their events and and uh they run all the production and everything else and and they put some money into those things, man. They really do. Um, but when we go there, we'll, we'll be running the production. Did you uh, see the match, the boxing match last night? Did you talk to Eddie after it? I did not. Um, I, I mean, I saw it on, I saw it on social media. Yeah. What did you make of that finish in the Francis fight? What do you mean? What did I make? Yeah, <laughs> what like, did I make like of it? What you saw, like it was, it was, it was. People are saying it's one of the more violent knockouts in boxing history. Yeah. I mean, going into the Fury fight. If Fury trained for the fight and didn't show up and, you know, look like he ate Tyson Fury, that's probably the way that fight would have ended, too. I mean, listen, the crossover, you know how I feel about crossovers into boxing, and that's, that's how they end, just like that. Dana, right here to your left. Um, uh, Ioanni on Jacek getting into the UFC Hall of Fame this summer. I saw you guys got to share a moment after the announcement, I guess. What did you guys say to each other, and I guess what does she mean to you and, and the company? We both said thank you to each other. You know, um, she's she's incredible. I love the first time I ever, 
ever saw Ioana fight in the UFC, I literally went back and grabbed her and said, come out and watch the rest of the fight. We literally sat there all night and watched the rest of the card together. Um, and from that night to tonight, we've become really close friends, and I have so much respect for her. And, you know, she, she, not only since she's when she was here, but when she retired, I mean, she still does so much stuff with us and for us, and she'll be with us for the rest of her life. Tonight's card um, had a five-round co-main event. I know you guys have done this a few times. More recently, we're se seeming to see it more for uh, non-title fights. Is that something that going forward, like, could it be every card that this ends up happening eventually? Well, th you know, the problem is, is that, like, this card tonight, and even more so UFC 300, when you look at most of the fights on the card, you're like, damn, I wish this was five rounds. But, you know, you can't do it all the time, but we'll be sitting in the room and we'll think of these fights that – is a co-main event, and we're like, well, let's just see if they both want five rounds. Or sometimes the fighters ask for five rounds. You know, they, they want to go five rounds. So it, it, it's sort of just kind of how we feel. But I think as fans, when we have great fights, like as you look through, we ran the first promo tonight for UFC 300. So from the first fight of the night all the way till the main event, I mean, every fight you, you, you wouldn't mind seeing five rounds of. How difficult was it to uh, – tonight was the first time we saw, like, the bout order as well. So how difficult was that to figure out where everybody goes? Like, I saw like, a lot of people talking about Bo Nickel being really high. So how challenging was that? I'm not kidding you. We literally finalized it today – or yesterday. Last night we finalized it uh, right after the weigh-ins. We started moving a couple more things around, and then last night we said, all right, this is it. This is the card because we were announcing it tonight. So um, if we didn't announce it tonight, we'd probably still be playing with it next week. It is what it is now. Hey, Dana, over here. Mm -hmm. Just curious what your thought was of just the whole atmosphere tonight. You had the crowd chanting USA, chanting Cheeto, all different flags from all countries. It was just, what were your thoughts just being here in that atmosphere? It's incredible, brother. I, I mean, it really kicked off and started at the uh, press conference. The press conference was insane. Awesome. Then we roll right into the... Uh, the, the uh, weigh-ins the next day, and then I, I knew tonight, you know, as long as some of these, you know, we got our holy shit moments with some of these fights that it was going to be electric in that place, and it, it was awesome. Miami is on fire. I mean, I just I can't say it enough. This, this city's on fire. It's, it's, it's such a great destination when you talk about everything that makes a place a destination, and then it's become such a huge sports town and now a fight town. We, we came here, I came here with Anderson Silva, I don't know how many years ago and we held a, a press event and literally there was no press there. And we, we've put on a couple fights. The gates weren't great. But in the last 10 years, this place has just exploded. And then finally for me, you mentioned 14 million plus for the gate. Yeah. So is it fair to say that Miami will get another one? You'll come back twice a year rather than once a year? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I'd come back next weekend. Uh, it's that good. I mean, you know what's crazy is that let – me, let me just put it to you this way. Probably the biggest venue you can do in the United States is Madison Square Garden, right? Miami is equal to Madison Square Garden now with numbers. Think, wrap your head around that and think about that 10 years ago. Would have never imagined it. Your opinion on Robelis de Spain knockout, it's a Q1 giant, two meter hate, uh, who was debuting tonight here in Miami. Sir, I have no idea what you just said to me. Robelis de Spain, who. Spain? Yeah. Who yeah. Got a knockout tonight. Uh, okay. And your opinion about the, uh, his performance? Yeah, and knockouts are great. When you, when, you, when you go in and you perform at this level, with everything that we were just saying about the, this place here tonight, the energy, the fans, and, and you pull off an, an, an incredible knockout, it, it literally doesn't get any better than that. Thank you, sir. They know we're here. Yeah, go ahead, brother. I know Chito lost, but you guys, uh, before the pandemic, had gone to Chile, had gone to Argentina. Uh, given his popularity, how much media there was here for him and fans, is there a chance that the UFC visits Ecuador at one point? Yeah, I, I mean, take Chito out of the equation, we end up in Ecuador someday anyway. Obviously, um, when you have somebody who's pop, you know, that's popular from, from that part of the world, it's like we're talking about Africa and Spain right now, seriously. We're, we're 
heavily invested in Mexico now. Um, yes, we, we will end up there someday. And just real quick, any update on Spain? Uh, no, not yet. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who is next? Go ahead. Uh, Dana, um, continuing with that question, um, there were uh, probably a record attendance from Ecuadorians. About 5,000 Ecuadorians were here. Maybe a bit more. You can feel it. Yeah, and more than 40 Ecuadorian journalists came to see Cheeto. Um, it would be good if UFC goes to Ecuador one day, but what would be your message to Ecuadorian fans that they were, you know, extremely explosive, electric tonight, here and back home? This is what I love about South America. I mean, they, they, it's, it's almost like that, that soccer mentality. They, they, they support their own, and, the, and, and they're very vocal, and uh, it just it, it helps create this unbelievable energy at sporting events when you when you have these people from other countries and, and Ecuador definitely represented in every way, shape and form. And it was fine. I mean, you hear USA or Ch I don't know what they were saying, something O'Malley. And then you'd hear Cheeto, Cheeto. And it's just it's the best, man. It creates that energy, that that buzz at a fight that you love. Thank you very much. We had a blast here. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Uh, Dana? Here. Yep. Um, uh, hello, Dana. Um, Hi. I just wondering, what do you think is coming now for Chido after this fight? Do you think maybe in the future is going to be the third part of this uh, this fight between Chido and Sean O'Malley? Could be? It could be, yeah. He's going to have to get back on the horse and win a couple fights, and who knows? He could he could work his way back up to O'Malley again because, yes, it's one and one So that, that fight could possibly happen. I'm not even thinking about that or considering that right now, but not saying it couldn't be a possibility. Thank you. You're welcome. Who was the other guy that said? Yeah, Dana, Go last ahead. one. Dana over here. So I know you guys have deals lined up with places, agreements for locations ahead of time, but I have to ask, I had a couple of people approach me after the conference and today after, like you said, an electric energy here in Miami. Is there a chance Miami becomes one of those stables where you go twice a year or maybe? That's what that other guy just asked me too. Yeah, well, maybe for UFC 305, that's the specific thing they've been asking me. That's interesting. That's interesting, yeah. That's funny. Was that, a, was that a talk at least, or is that kind no. of up in the air? Never even thought of it until you just said it. Awesome. And obviously, the Dustin Poirier, Benoist, and Denis, it was a great fight from round one and two till the end. But Benoist definitely showed that he belonged. Is that a guy that you guys are going to keep giving these big fights? or? Yeah, no, he's definitely he's one of the best in the world. Listen, Poirier, like what I said when we started this press conference, what I said about Poirier, Poirier put on another legendary performance and took himself to another level. And Poirier is one of the best to do it. So it, 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 it doesn't hurt his stock at all, not, not even a little bit. You know, he's another one now that's got to jump back in the mix and win some fights. He'll learn from this. Uh, Thank you. Was there one more guy that was trying to ask me? Yeah, last one for me. Uh, Bryce Mitchell got his uh, camo shorts. Sean O'Malley got his pink shorts. Brendan Allen, uh, upcoming UFC headliner, wants purple shorts to commemorate his daughter as well as his school's, uh, his school's colors. Can you get uh, purple shorts next time out? This is when we know we've gone too long with the press conference when we start talking about clothing. Uh, sure, he can have purple pants. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Good night.